ています。Oxygen Therapy Presented by Dr. Jill Mohsin Udin MBBS, DTCD, FCPS, Pulmonology Assistant Professor, Respiratory Medicine Oxygen Therapy Oxygen therapy is usually defined as the administration of oxygen and concentration greater than those found in ambient air. Oxygen is a treatment for hypoxemia not breathlessness target saturation oxygen is a drug and should be prescribed with a target saturation range the recommended oxygen target saturation range in patients not at risk of type 2 respiratory failure is 94 to 98 percentage the recommended oxygen target saturation range in patients at risk of type 2 respiratory failure is 88 to 92 percentage caution most non-hypoxemic breathless patients do not benefit from oxygen therapy, but a sudden reduction of less than or equal to 3% in our oxygen saturation require prompt full assessment of the patient because this may be the first evidence of an acute illness. Importance of Oxygen Saturation Oxygen saturation, the fifth vital sign, should be checked by pulse oximetry in all breathless and acutely ill patients supplemented by blood gases when necessary, and the inspired oxygen concentration should be recorded on the observation chart with the oximetry result. The other vital signs are pulse, blood pressure, temperature and respiratory rate. Position of patient to correct hypoxemia. Oxygenation is high in the prone and supine with 45 degrees head up tilt postures than in the supine posture. Since oxygenation is reduced in the supine position, fully conscious hypoxemic patients should ideally maintain the most upright posture possible, or the most comfortable posture for the patient. Oxygen prescription for hypoxemic patients in hospital. Best practice is to prescribe a target range for patients at the time of admission so that appropriate oxygen therapy can be started in the event of unexpected clinical deterioration with hypoxemia. The target saturation should be written on the drug chart. Write appropriate devices and flow rates in order to achieve the target saturation range. Initial Oxygen Therapy For acutely breathless patients not at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure who have saturations below 85%, treatment should be started with a reservoir mask at 15 liters per minute in the first instance. The oxygen concentration can be adjusted downwards using nasal cannulae at 1 to 6 liters per minute or a simple face mask at 5 to 10 liters per minute to maintain a target saturation of 94 to 98 percentage once the patient has stabilized. Initial oxygen therapy continue. In cases of acute hypoxemia without critical illness or risk for hypercapnic respiratory failure, start treatment with nasal cannulae or a simple face mask, if cannulae are not tolerated or not effective with the flow rate, to achieve a saturation of 94 to 98 percentage. Initial oxygen therapy continue. If medium concentration therapy with nasal cannulae or a simple face mask does not achieve the desired saturation, change to a reservoir mask. High flow nasal oxygen using specialized equipment should be considered as an alternative to reservoir mask treatment. Oxygen delivery systems. Oxygen delivery systems are categorized into two groups. One low flow. Two high flow systems. Appropriate selection of oxygen devices and delivery systems depends on the degree of hypoxemia, the existing evidence for the patient's underlying diagnosis and patient preference. Low flow systems. Low flow systems provide lower oxygen flow than the actual inspiratory flow, 30 L middle dot min minus 1. When the patient inspires, the oxygen is diluted with room air and the degree of dilution depends on the inspiratory flows. Therefore, 
These oxygen delivery systems do not allow for accurate calculation of the inspiratory oxygen fraction, phi O2. Low flow oxygen delivery systems include 1. Nasal cannula 2. Simple face mask 3. Non-rebreather mask High flow oxygen High flow oxygen delivery systems provide higher oxygen flows and the phi O2 is stable and is not affected by the patient's type of breathing. High flow oxygen delivery systems include 1. Rebreather mask 2. Venturi mask 3. High flow nasal cannula Non-rebreather mask a non-rebreather mask is consists of a face mask connected to a reservoir bag that's filled with a high concentration of oxygen. The reservoir bag is connected to an oxygen tank. The mask covers both your nose and mouth. The mask has a one-way valve system that prevents exhaled oxygen from mixing with the oxygen in the reservoir bag. Inhalation of oxygen occur from the reservoir bag. Exhaled air escapes through vents in the side of the mask and goes back into the atmosphere. They're generally only used for short-term increases in oxygenation. Non-rebreather masks aren't commonly used because they come with several risks. Disruptions in airflow can lead to suffocation. One can potentially choke if he or she vomits while wearing the mask if they are sedated or unconscious. A healthcare provider usually remains in attendance during use of this type mask. Nasal cannula. A nasal cannula is the most common oxygen delivery system, used for mild hypoxia. It delivers oxygen into the nasopharyngeal space and can be set to deliver between 1 and 6 liters middle dot min minus 1, 24 to 40 percent phi O2. Phi O2 increases by approximately 4% with each liter of oxygen per minute. Simple face mask. A simple face mask is usually used to deliver a low to moderate amount of oxygen. A simple mask contains holes on the sides to let exhaled air through and to prevent suffocation in case of a blockage. It can deliver around 40% to 60% oxygen at 6 to 10 liters per minute. Venturi mask. The Venturi mask uses delivers a predetermined and fixed concentration of oxygen to the patient. The size of the constriction determines the final concentration of oxygen for a given gas flow. This is achieved in spite of the patient's respiratory pattern by providing a higher gas flow than the peak inspiratory flow rate. As the flow of oxygen passes through the constriction, a negative pressure is created. This causes the ambient air to be entrained and mixed with the oxygen flow. The phi O2 is dependent on the degree of air entrainment. Less entrainment ensures a higher phi O2 is delivered. This can be achieved by using smaller entrainment apertures or bigger windows to entrain ambient air. The smaller the orifice is, the greater the negative pressure generated, so the more ambient air entrained, the lower the phi O2. The oxygen concentration can be 0 0.24, 0 0.28, 0 0.31, 0 0.35, 0 0.4 or 0 0.6. With the Venturi mask system, oxygen inflow is connected to a specific color-coded entrainment device at the base of the mask that provides a set phi O2 at a set oxygen inflow rate. Various entrainment devices can provide an phi O2 of 0.24 to 0.5, with an oxygen inflow of 4 to 15 liters per minute and a total flow delivered to the patient, including entrained air, of 35 to 45 liters per minute. The Venturi mask is ideal for a patient with COPD who has a low to moderate oxygen requirement but is at risk for hypercarbia with uncontrolled oxygen therapy. Oxygen therapy for specific conditions that frequently require oxygen therapy. In acute asthma, aim at an oxygen saturation of 94 to 98%. In cases of pneumonia who are not at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure, aim at an oxygen saturation of 94 to 98%. In acute breathlessness due to lung cancer, aim at an oxygen saturation of 94 to 98% unless there is coexisting COPD. 
in acute deterioration of interstitial lung diseases, aim at an oxygen saturation of 94-98% or the highest possible if these targets cannot be achieved. In most cases of pneumothorax, aim at an oxygen saturation of 94-98% if the patient is not at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure. In patients with pneumothorax having hospital observation without drainage, the use of high concentration oxygen, 15 liters slash minute flow rate via reservoir mask, is recommended unless the patient is at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure. In pleural effusion, aim at an oxygen saturation of 94-98%, or 88-92% if the patient is at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure. In pulmonary embolism, aim at an oxygen saturation of 94-98%, or 88-92% if the patient is at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure. In acute heart failure, aim at an oxygen saturation of 94-98%, or 88-92% if the patient is at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure. In cardiogenic pulmonary edema who are not responding to standard treatment. Continuous positive airway pressure CPAP, with entrained oxygen or high flow humidified nasal oxygen to maintain saturation 94-98% or 88-92% if at risk of hypercapnia. Should be considered as an adjunctive treatment or non-invasive ventilation NIV, if there is coexistent hypercapnia and acidosis. In anemia, aim at an oxygen saturation of 94-98% or 88-92% if the patient is at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure. Correction of anemia by blood transfusion should be based on national guidelines. In myocardial infarction and acute coronary syndromes, aim at an oxygen saturation of 94-98% or 88-92% if the patient is at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure. High concentrations of oxygen should be avoided in patients with stroke, unless required to maintain normal oxygen saturation. Aim at an oxygen saturation of 94-98% or 88-92% if the patient is at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure. In cases of carbon monoxide poisoning, an apparently normal oximetry reading may be produced by carboxyhemoglobin, so aim at an oxygen saturation of 100% and use a reservoir mask at 15 liters per minute irrespective of the oximeter reading and arterial oxygen tension. POW 2. In most poisonings, aim at an oxygen saturation of 94-98% unless the patient is at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure. In most metabolic adrenal disorders, aim at an oxygen saturation of 94-98% unless the patient is at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure. COPD exacerbations. Some patients with COPD and other conditions are vulnerable to repeated episodes of hypercapnic respiratory failure. In these cases, treatment should be based on the results of previous blood gas estimations. For patients with prior hypercapnic failure it is recommended that low concentration oxygen treatment should be started using a 24% venturi mask at 2 to 3 liters per minute or a 28% venturi mask at 4 liters per minute or nasal. Cannulae at 1 to 2 liters per minute if a 24% mask is not available with an initial target saturation of 88 to 92%. If the saturation remains below 88% in pre-hospital care despite a 28% venturi mask, change to nasal cannulae at 2-6 liters per minute or a simple face mask at 5 liters per minute with target saturation of 88-92%. Avoid excessive oxygen use in patients with COPD. The risk of respiratory acidosis in patients with hypercapnic respiratory failure is increased if the POW2 is above 10.0 kPa. If the patient is hypercapnic, PCO26 kPa or 45 mm Hg, and acidotic, pH 7.35 or H plus 45 ml/L, 
start NIF with targeted oxygen therapy if respiratory acidosis persists for more than 30 minutes after initiation of standard medical management. If a patient is suspected to have hypercapnic respiratory failure due to excessive oxygen therapy, the oxygen therapy must be stepped down to the lowest level required to maintain a saturation range of 88 to 92 percent. This may be achieved using 28 percent or 24 percent oxygen from a Venturi mask or 1 to 2 liters slash minute via nasal cannulae. Sudden cessation of supplementary oxygen therapy can cause life-threatening rebound hypoxemia. In musculoskeletal and neurological disorders with acute respiratory failure or acute on chronic respiratory failure, aim at an oxygen saturation of 88 to 92 percent. Morbidly obese patients, body mass index, BMI 40 kg, slash M2, even without evidence of OSA are at risk of hypoventilation and should maintain a target saturation of 88 to 92 percent. NIV should be considered for hypercapnic patients with COPD, CF, neuromuscular disorders or morbid obesity who are at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure if the pH is 7.35 or H plus 45 ml. L. Oxygen therapy during pregnancy. Women who suffer from major trauma, sepsis or acute illness during pregnancy should receive the same oxygen therapy as any other seriously ill patients, with the target oxygen saturation of 94 to 98%. The same target range should be applied to women with hypoxemia due to acute complications of pregnancy, e.g., collapse related to amniotic fluid embolus eclampsia or antepartum or postpartum hemorrhage etc. Oxygen use in perioperative care and during procedures requiring conscious sedation. Hyperoxemia, is not recommended to reduce the incidence of postoperative nausea and vomiting. All procedures involving conscious sedation warrant routine continuous monitoring of oxygen saturation via pulse oximetry prior to and during the procedure and in the recovery period, particularly fiber optic bronchoscopy and upper gastrointestinal GI, endoscopy. Significant arterial oxygen desaturation SPO 290% or fall of 4% or more that is prolonged, one minute during endoscopy procedures, should be corrected by supplemental oxygen with the aim of achieving target oxygen saturations of 94 to 98%, or 88 to 92% in those at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure. Oral introduction of the flexible bronchoscope through the modified face mask during NPPV. Humidification of oxygen. Humidification is not required for the delivery of low flow oxygen, mask or nasal cannulae, or for the short term use of high flow oxygen. It is reasonable to use humidified oxygen for patients who require high flow oxygen systems for more than 24 hours or who report upper airway discomfort due to dryness. Monitoring and adjusting oxygen therapy. Pulse oximetry must be available in all locations where emergency oxygen is given by healthcare providers. In all situations where repeated blood gas measurements are required. They should be measured as soon as possible, usually within 30 minutes of any treatment change, to determine if the proposed target saturation. Pulse oximetry. Oximeters are less reliable at low saturation such as 80% but it reflects the SAO too accurately at saturation above about 88%. An oxygen saturation of 92% or above measured by pulse oximetry has a sensitivity of 100% and specificity of 86% for excluding hypoxemia. Accuracy is diminished in patients with poor peripheral perfusion which may occur chronically in conditions such as systemic sclerosis or acutely in patients with hypertension or hypovolemia. Blood gases should be checked in the following situations. All critically ill patients. Deteriorating oxygen saturation, fall of greater than or equal to 3%, or increasing breathlessness in a patient with previously stable chronic hypoxemia, COPD. 
previously stable patients who deteriorate clinically and require increased FiO2 to maintain a constant oxygen saturation. Any patient with risk factors for hypercapnic respiratory failure who develops acute breathlessness, deteriorating oxygen saturation, drowsiness or other features of carbon dioxide retention. Patients with breathlessness who are thought to be at risk of metabolic conditions such as diabetic ketoacidosis or metabolic acidosis. Weaning and discontinuation of oxygen therapy. Lower the oxygen concentration when, 1 the patient is clinically stable 2 the oxygen saturation is above the target range or, 3 saturation in the upper limit of the target range for some time, usually 4 to 8 hours. Most stable convalescent patients will eventually be stepped down to 2 liters per minute via nasal cannulae prior to cessation of oxygen therapy. Patients at risk of hypercapnic respiratory failure may be stepped down to 1 liter per minute or occasionally half a liter slash min closing parenthesis via nasal cannulae or a 24% venturi mask at 2 liters per minute prior to cessation of oxygen therapy. If the saturation falls below the patient's target range on stopping oxygen therapy, restart the lowest concentration that maintained the patient in the target range and monitor for 5 minutes. People say you can't live without love. I think oxygen is more important. Oxygen Therapy Learning Pulmonology